After a couple more deaths, this game's definitely getting harder, so we need to add a new member to the team who can help us out. And in this Roots encounter, we run into a Grimer. So we whittle him down once again, and we got Baby Frank poisoned, which was sad. And then we chuck one Pokeball at it, and apparently it's just becoming that much easier to catch them for some reason. Apparently I forgot to go over the stats for Grimer, but it's relatively slow with really good defenses and and with attacks that are nothing to write home about. I gave it the Ephio Light, and now it's just my little tanky poison boy. And we rush back to the next location so that we can get a new encounter to add to this team. And this time we run into a Mean Fu, a Pokemon I've never used before in my life. So hopefully it's got good stats. Frank is now healed of his poison and he leads the way as we chuck another Pokeball and first try once again. Easy peasy. We named it Angie because it was angry, uh, but apparently not because its ability is Flower Gift, so it likes to give flowers when it's sunny outside. I don't know. Anyways, at least it's pretty fast. Defenses aren't super great, but special attacks not bad. Not ideal for a fighting type Pokemon, but it is what it is. We just gotta find a special fighting move. Apparently we get an encounter on this bridge, which is pretty cool. So we wander around, we collect feathers for like 10 minutes before we finally run into something, and it appears that there is a Milotic just hanging out on the branch. We will absolutely take this one if we can catch it. But unfortunately, this Milotic wants to take our little baby Frank prisoner, as it traps him in a spider web. And now, we cannot escape. It's time to whip out the Ultra Balls. We need to catch this quick, otherwise our little baby is going to die. But this Milotic is not easy to catch. What is going on? Just miss! No, Frank! Frank! This could be the risk of a lifetime. If Frank dies, I'm gonna cry. If Frank dies, I'm gonna be so sad. I wanted you to grow up big and strong. I'm so sorry, Frank. I'm so sorry, Frank. <laughs> God! Frank didn't die! Frank didn't die! Frank is alive! Oh my god. All of that worry and fear only to get a Pokemon with some of the worst special defense I've ever seen. Also very slow. Has pretty good attack, which is nice. Decent defense overall. Magma armor is whatever. So yeah, all that for a Pokemon I'm probably not gonna use, but you know, it was a fun encounter. Two more encounters before we take on the next gym. This one here in the cold storage, what do we got hanging out down here? And surprisingly enough, we run into a Slowbro, which could end up being a pretty good Pokemon if the stats are right. And plus, it's now a Psychic type that we can actually use in a gym. We started to utilize Ariel, or Panpour, for catching Pokemon because we gotta stop risking Frank's life. And Ariel's pretty useless. Plus, we found out that Ariel has Yawn. So now it's actually the primo Pokemon for catching other Pokemon. Unfortunately, Ariel really sucks, as this Slowbro just beats it down. All the more reason to catch it. But, since I know Slowbro's gonna be asleep for at least one turn here, I'm just gonna chuck a Pokeball and hope and pray. And with a little bit of luck from the Deeny Gods, we're able to land ourselves a Slowbro. Hopefully, it's as good as I think it is based on how it was hitting Ariel. So the special attack was quite good as I anticipated. One major problem, its special defense, not so great. To have its dump in attack is awesome, we like that. And it has pretty good speed. Plus, on top of this swift swim ability, it has rain dance, which makes it actually a pretty damn good Pokemon, all things considered. Just gotta watch out for that special defense. So we run into our final encounter before taking on gym number five, and it's another third straight fully evolved Pokemon, this time our little resident ground water type boy, who's only quad weak to grass. Unfortunately, Ariel is still useless and just gets bodied by this giant fish, which is just annoying, so we can barely even utilize its sleep. But, there's a twist to this. This Whizcash has color change, which means it's not actually even ground and water type. It changes to whatever you hit it with. So we just chuck a Pokeball at it, hoping for good luck, seeing if we could maybe just maybe get a third catch in a row on the first Pokeball, and with the luck of the Dini Gods once again. We drop in the bombs, we catch it, we don't even have to worry. And hot damn, we got some good old speed on this Whizcash, which we named Starfish for some reason. Its dump is in special attack, which is fine, as long as you can get some pretty solid physical attacks. Maybe Earthquake, I don't know. 
Defense isn't great, but special defense is decent. Honestly, overall, it's actually pretty good, all things considered. Color change is a bit weird, but I think we can utilize that to form some sort of strategy. Especially because once you open with this Pokemon, it's only weak to one type. So you just have to avoid that one type at the beginning of the battle, and then you'll never get hit by super effective moves after that point. Today we take on gym number 5. It is a 3v3 against Clay, level cap 31. Starting with Ruiner, I think we can hit hard enough to just drop him quick. He opens with a Kingler, which is just perfect, because we can just drop one bomb on him and hit as hard as we can. And that is an easy start, it's now 2v3. But I think that Kingler was meant to lull me into a sense of complacency. Because next he whips out a Zekrom, which is going to make this fight a little bit interesting. Oh, I avoided a dual chop? That was huge! That's a, like a 90 damage move. Okay. That kind of sucks. Simply because I can't get the kill here. You gotta hold up, man. You gotta hold up. Okay. We survived the hit. We're gonna have to pull out. We get a free pull out because he's gonna heal. Ruiner is now down for the count. So we have to bring in Frank. Who's our tanky dragon boy? Problem is, Frank doesn't hit very hard. But we do get him paralyzed, which is really nice. But as you can see here, Zekrom hits harder. So we're in big trouble. And we're also paralyzed. At this point, all seems lost. Well, we're losing this fight, guys. We're losing this fight. So all we can realistically do at this point is do as much damage as we can, hope we survive the hit but we're expecting some major casualties. And somehow, Frank survives with one HP because he used the same move again, and now we have a dilemma of whether to sack Frank or to switch him out and save his life. Sleepy Girl is weak to electricity, but Frank is our baby boy. We must protect him at all costs, even if it means sacrificing the run. And it turns out the Zekrom is an idiot as he goes with a vice grip, which does practically no damage. Sleepy Girl does well to start, but Zekrom heals itself again. And now, Sleepy Girl's health is getting low. We're looking doomed. But with one last hurrah, Sleepy Girl, in her final attempt at doing damage, finishes off Zekrom to get to the final Pokemon. All that's left is the Ace. We need the luck of the Pokemon gods here to see us through. What is the next draw? And the Dini Cult is with us, as we draw a very weak Pokemon. Granted, we are weak to it, we need the speed, and we need to hit hard. Hope we do a ton of damage. She might be weak enough. Just be super weak, be super weak, be super weak, be super weak. It was super weak! It was super weak! Oh my god, there's no way! That's insane. Holy crap. Okay, gym five's completed. Fresh off an electric gym battle, we head into Charge Stone Cave for our next encounter. And unfortunately for us, we simply just get a spinner rack. On the bright side, it was very easy to capture. It's got a bit of an eclectic set of stats, physical attacker, speed's not too bad, good special defense. Does have adaptability, which will power up every poison and bug type move, so that's pretty nice. So, I mean, we can consider using it down the line, once it evolves. We waste no time as we smash through N and blast through the cave. Things are looking a lot better as the team rolls through our opponents. We found another fossil en route, and it allowed us to get a brand new Pokemon to add to the team. And we ended up with the Swana, which is not a Pokemon I've ever used before. Swana's actually a really good special attacker, and stats overall are a lot higher than I would have expected for a simple Swan. Good defense, rest of the stats are fairly even, this is something I might be able to work with in my team. Trace is irrelevant, but could be useful in certain scenarios, and it's looking like an interesting Pokemon. We head north of the airplane town to try to get an encounter before the gym. And we head into the tall grass and what do we find? A little doggo girl. Since I love little doggos, I opt to go for a premier ball to make it special. And with our first Pokeball, once again, we seal the deal. We evolve her to Hound Doom, and looking at the stats, there's one thing that stands out in particular. She has Drizzle, which is very unfortunate. It's gonna make all her fire moves weaker and it means she's gonna get destroyed by any water type, so... Stats aside, which are actually pretty good overall, decent defenses, really good attacks, speed's the worst, but it's not terrible. The drizzle makes it impossible to use this Pokemon, unless we can somehow give it Sunny Day, in which case it'll have to use that move at the beginning of every fight for the rest of its life. 